Greetings fellow gamer. Have you ever had this moment where you were so young and impressionable as a child? You would watch a cool action movie and think to yourself, wow, I wish there was a video game made for this. Well you and I both buddy, you and I both are the reason why companies just wouldn't stop making video games based on movies to profit from naive kids. Why profit? Well usually because these games are just a rushed mess that copies ideas from other games and reskins it for the movie it's based on. Introducing the game, a rebellion would really like it to never talk about. Well, now that I think about it, it's probably still better than lots of other games rebellion has shed out. Anyways, everybody watched The Mummy, featuring Brendan Fraser. A great movie. One of my childhood favorites. Well, it wasn't spared and actually had multiple games made on it. All of which were, uh, let's say, were not the best games ever made. Back to Mummy V, the next entry into the here's another game from Brolic's childhood that just so happens to be set in Egypt. Well, how was the game, you ask? Oh, by the way, the game is a copyright nightmare as it rips off scenes and soundtrack directly from the movie, so bear with me here as I improvise. The game starts off with them introducing you to the movie's plot. I say the movie's plot because the game itself does not really follow it at all. As I said, the game just feels like it tries to do so many things that other games did at the time by forcing in a huge variety of gameplay elements and see what sticks. The game has platforming, puzzle solving, combat. I'm also willing to bet my cock and balls that this game is the main number one inspiration for Temple Run. The only thing that even someone reminiscent to the movie are the cast and the setting. Everything that happens in between is a deep, dark fantasy. And the game is absolute jank. And I have a very unhealthy love-hate relationship with it. Do you know what I love more than the mummy though? Great Shadow Legends. Did you know that the game has millions of players and dozens of tough bosses? This month's raid released a lot of new content and things to do. There are now 11 new champions and 200 brand new missions to complete with exclusive legendary champion as your reward. They even introduced a new Shadow Kian faction inspired by medieval Japan and the rest of the anime world. These people are shrouded in mystery you guys. No one's heard from them for hundreds of years, so get ready to meet the new members as they arrive for the game. What I like about the game is it never gets too boring. With the help of awesome daily rewards, you can progress with almost no effort. Just look at how I'm getting the new champions only by opening my free daily shards. As always, raids getting bigger and better every single month, so it's never been easier to get started. So what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. Once you're in, you can find me under the nickname Broleg for the zero. And it's easy as that, just click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. Now back to the video. The game has 15 levels in total, split up into a hub system. The levels are actually really long and the first time playthrough can take up to 12 hours to complete. There are three hubs in total and they are split into themes and difficulty levels. I mean, the game looks really good for a game released in 1996. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, the game looks okay for the time period. The environment design is actually quite decent. The enemies you face fit in nicely with what the setting is. The animations, though, are uh, a real gamer moment. They're static, robotic, and overall unappealing in most of the cases. The running animation especially looks like O'Connell sold a diaper on his way down the tomb like it's a furry crinkle party. The gameplay is nothing to write your mom about, going around the levels, collecting puzzle pieces needed to proceed to next hub. Each level is split into stages, covered in secrets, puzzles, and combat scenarios. By the end of each stage, you'll be provided with the key needed to proceed further. Once you pick it up, you either get a red dot on it or not, implying that you have beaten the stage 100% or not. This mechanic had me fucked up and raged multiple times during the stream. What? 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 Where? Where? What, what did I miss? What did I miss? Tell me. You're so fucking slow, Connell. No, I'm not kidding, it's literally broken. Sometimes it gives you a red dot, sometimes it doesn't. I literally had a moment where I beat the stage 100%, double checked everything and didn't get a red dot, but then I restarted the level. I'm gonna go fucking kill myself. Ow. Did the whole thing again, from the beginning. Mac it's same order, by the way. And then I got it. Huh. Oh, jump shot. <gasps> Why did you give me a red dot now, look? What did I do differently? If you go back and pick up the treasure after you already picked up the key, it still supposedly counts as a red dot. Except it doesn't most of the fucking time. There's also this one area where I still can't grab the treasure as it's literally fucking impossible to do in time. No, come on! Oh, you're kidding me! You're kidding me! You're, you're kidding me! You're fucking kidding me! The puzzles in this game are elementary at best. You're guaranteed to finish them faster than you can say cupcake. cupcake. They range down from you having to press two buttons opposite of each other to rotating textures upside down to fit in the picture. Hello. But one is especially difficult because it requires you to know how to count to six. The game has a life system and after you run out of lives, you have to start the entire level over. Another terrible part of the game is janky platforming and god-awful traps. Hey, y'all little sussy bockers are gonna make me act up. 
<laughs> the jumping mechanics are very stiff and don't work half the time. While the traps, oh man, those fucking traps. Oh look, a big button. Oh look, treasure. But by far, my least favorite part of the game are the minigame sections. Yeah, the Donkey Kong, Temple Run, Surfing, and Pac-Man. Uh, the Donkey Kong bit can go fuck itself as it's literally the least fun and most painful section of the game. You have to perfectly time your jumps and suffer through terrible collision registration. The surfing and running also have their BS moments. There the log just barely swim by a branch and oh god, O'Connell will remember that he has a neuromuscular disorder and collapse to his fucking death. <laughs> There's a stage where as soon as a cutscene ends, you almost instantly get squashed by a rock. Oh, I DIED! I JUST SPAWNED IN! The only way of preventing death is by holding run button during the cutscene before the stage starts. This is the little definition of trial and error, which isn't the most fun thing when you what consider you have limited lives. Now let's talk about some positives. The combat is pretty basic on the surface, but it's all a scam. Once you look deep into it, it's the most in-depth mechanic of the game. Yes, the game is literally Dark Souls of PS1. Now would you believe me if I told you that you can roll in this game? That you can Parry attacks in this game, or you can just shoot everyone. LOL. The ammo is pretty limited to begin with, but it doesn't really matter since machete is the best weapon in the game. The melee combat is really manageable once you get a hang of it, and it's the best way of conserving ammo for later stages of the levels where they spam you with mummies. The game actually has a decent weapon selection. You get a torch, a machete, and explosive chupa chups, dynamite that's more dangerous to the player than the mummies, a pair of revolvers, a shotgun, and finally the Lewis gun. The mummies are very bullet spongy, so get used to the machete early on. As being low on ammo, post Biden presidency is a norm. The enemies are pretty diverse in appearance even though they behave very similarly. You first face off American miners who are looking for oil reserves in Egypt. You then fight a diverse cast of Covid shield vaccine recipients, naked mummies, hammer mummies that can't be parried, copish and shield mummies that are fast and can block. Know what they can't block though? The next enemy type holds a spear and is actually harder to melee because they have more range than you. You then get to face the archers with some of the world's slowest errors in video gaming history. There are also these cool wizards and spooky ghosts. And the game has two bosses in total. The enemy AI is exactly what you would expect an AI to act like in a PS1 game. Where it really suffers is elevation. If you jump on any high platform, the AI is literally powerless to do anything about it. Worry not, it also applies to you. Because if AI is just one inch above or below you, O'Connell would make sure to miss. The sound design in the game is actually really good. The gunshots and monster sounds are all well made. It makes the guns satisfying to use and monsters satisfying to kill. The music in the game is really amazing too, because it's ripped directly from the movie. There are bugs here and there, mostly related to red dots. I've only encountered one game breaking bug though. Came back for light, ain't getting none. Uh oh. Guys! Guys, we have a problem! Guys, we have a fucking problem, guys! I, I'm, I'm pressing everything! While doing this review, I have literally mastered every aspect of the game due to having to replay it so many times, so don't be surprised to catch me live streaming speedruns of it anytime soon. So in conclusion, while this review may have sounded very critical, let me assure you that this is an extremely fun game and I fucking love it, especially after you get a hang of the controls. The minigame sections are very few in between and the combat is extremely enjoyable, especially for a game this old. Oh no! 7 out of 10. Now let me conclude this review with the final boss fight of the game, as that is definitely a must see. Ugly face away from her. <sighs> O'Connell, get me off here! Break the chains! 